Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Today I'm going to talk about inspiration and allowing inspiration. And that word allowing is so incredibly important. You see, inspiration doesn't come from within us. It's not from the thoughts and the experiences, although it can be a combination that sparks an inspiration, but we don't get inspiration from all of the old thoughts and the old patterns and the old beliefs that we hold in our minds. Inspiration comes from something outside of us, the collective consciousness, the, the source of all wisdom. If you think about people like Albert Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, or anyone who has had an amazing idea. It's often because they create space in their, in their lives to allow these ideas to come to them. And they tap into and go beyond their own minds to create space for something new to arrive, something to arrive in from this collective consciousness that we're all connected to. And it's about connecting to that collective consciousness that allows that inspiration to find the spark in you, to ignite the memories in you that are relevant to what it is that you're hoping to get inspiration for. So the key today is to how do you how do you do that allowing? <laughs> in a world where we're so focused on doing, then very little on being, although it's starting to shift with things like the practice of meditation, of yoga, of mindfulness, we're starting to create more space or focus on creating more space in our lives. And this space is where the inspiration happens. And it can be anything for anyone because I'm not saying that this, what I'm going to share with you, is a prescription and if you do this you will get inspired. It's more of a state of being, a receptive state of being. But I'm going to give you some practices that you can try on to see which one fits you best and which one allows you to get into that receptive state of being the most. So one of the things you can do, and one of the things that I love to do, is to go and walk out in nature, or even in a park, or even along the road, but somewhere where you don't have to be um, thinking all the time, because it's about being present with where you are. It's about getting out of your mind, out of your thoughts, out of the craziness and the busyness and the juggling and the manipulating maneuvering that goes on in your head and being where you truly are, in the space that you are. You are. One of the things that I've also loved to do is to run because I find that when my mind is occupied working my body and sort of the rhythm and watching where I'm going and um, it, it sort of has a focus that it's easier for me to step out of that. So quite often in the past when I've gone running is when I have my most inspired thoughts. But even in the state of running, I have to get out of my head because quite often my mind is busy on a problem that I've got to do with work or one of my kids or my family or something. And I can feel that my energy is in my head working on that problem. So in the past when I found that and I'm running, I then just bring my focus onto my breathing and when I know that I've got that sort of presence and I'm with my breath and I'm with my body, then I take my focus out into the world and the space that I happen to be running in. Um, and I love running outside. I, I don't do running in gyms. It's too claustrophobic for me. So for me, when I run, I run outside, I run in the countryside. Um, and it's that being that presence in nature. So another way you can do it is through meditation. And I'm not going to go into too much about meditation at the moment because there is so much out there. And there is a fabulous app called um, Insight Timer, which has hundreds and thousands of free meditations where you can go and try different ones and see which one resonates with you. But the most important thing when you meditate, if you're trying to do this to allow space for inspiration, is to get out of your thoughts and your mind. So whatever it is that you do, find one that resonates with you and allows you to do that. I've been dabbling with a couple of things recently which have really helped me to get into a space of inspiration. One of them is the silver mind control method. Um, and it's a really old fashioned mind control method and Jose Silva is now past. But I'll put a link to his website in the notes below so that you can find that easily. Um, you might struggle to get the information but I think there's lots of instructors and things around that might be able to help. And I think there's a PDF online that you can read if you're really interested. 
The other thing that I've been doing more recently is listening to a lot of Abraham Hicks, and you might hear me mention this in a couple of the podcasts because it's just very current in my life at the moment. And um, in one of them, they talk about a meditation where you just listen to the the sort of the background noises of where you are. And she talks particularly about um, air conditioners because I think they live in a hot part of America. But if you're living in England, that that's not really something that you can find. But you can, if you're in a room and you can hear um, quite often the TV, if it's switched off, can makes a low humming sound unless you've switched it off at the plug or a fridge or something like that that has a low constant background noise. Or if you listen very, very carefully, most of us have a very faint ringing sound in our ears. And you can sort of tap into that and learn to listen to that because the more intently you listen to that, the more space you allow for source, for the collective consciousness to flow through you and for those for that inspiration to come in. Just daydreaming allows space for inspiration. Allowing your thoughts to wander without control, without direction, and just seeing the beauty and the magic of what comes up from that thought process. Um, with Albert Einstein, I think, um, and I don't have any proof or evidence of this whatsoever, but I think that he got inspiration quite often when he was playing his violin because he was so at one with the instrument and playing the instrument and so present that he wasn't in his mind. And in those moments, that to me would be the perfect space to allow that pure thought, that inspiration to come into you. Inspiration is around us all the time. Um, ideas, um, I can't remember who it was, um, but somebody once, I think it was a book I read, and I have a feeling that it's the artist's way, but I'm, I'm, I don't quote me on that, I'm not absolutely sure. And they were talking about how ideas, um, they're like living entities and they come to you and if you don't use them, then they move on to somebody else to be used. And I just, I thought it was such a beautiful thing. But something that I also know is that an inspiration, even if it does have, is a living entity and moves on, how you interpret it, how you take that inspiration and through your experiences, how you express that inspiration into the world will always be so completely unique to you that you don't have to worry about somebody else stealing your idea in that way because the way that they then take that idea and bring it out into the world will be completely different and have a totally different energy from the way that you do it. An inspiration to me is the source of conscious action. And this to me is so incredibly important because quite often in the world, and I can see that we're shifting now, that the world is becoming more conscious and more aware because these things that I'm talking about are so much more important to people than they ever used to be. But in the past, we used to have motivation and I'm going to do, actually it might be the next video, but shortly in the next few weeks, I'm going to do a video on motivation versus inspiration. But motivation used to be a big part of our lives. And now um, it's becoming less and less so. People understand that having an inspired thought and following it and, and allowing the action to come from this inspired thought is a much more productive way to live. Um, the the results that you get from following inspiration are so much greater and faster and more exciting than by following motivation. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that too much because I'm going to do a whole video on that very shortly. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me today. And if you have, I really truly value your likes, your subscriptions and your comments. Um, and also, if you want to share it, please, that would be amazing. If you'd like to access any more of my resources, I, I have a lot. <laughs> You can get them on my website, which is www.brittania.com, and that's B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. I also have a few short, free mini courses on there as well, should you wish to dip into certain areas of what I share. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.